So I made this video about two years ago going over the threat of e-bike battery fires. Since then, a lot of things has changed. The popularity of e-bikes have only increased. So I want to revisit the topic today and see where this issue stands. Okay, so last time we talked about this topic, we had videos like this showing some bikes catching fire and it's very catastrophic. It's an aggressive chemical fire. It's scary and it can cause significant damage. But the important thing to realize here is that even back then in like 2020, the early days of the e-bike market, uh, these events were extremely rare. We're talking like 0.01% of uh, the time. But if you take a closer look at the bikes in these videos that are having these issues, you're going to notice uh, a trend here. Most of the bikes are kind of off-brand or even full-on DIY bikes that use often janky, no-name parts. And the construction and the materials are questionable at best. Because believe it or not, batteries are uh, very safe. Like, we know how to build batteries. Lots of devices in your life have batteries. Think your phone, computer camera i mean everything has a battery and you know when was the last time you had uh, a fire randomly break out now the big caveat here is that all these devices like your smartphone use very high quality batteries that have all the safety certifications and the e-bike market is still in the early days with lots of new untested companies i have noticed as time goes on uh, lots of companies are going bankrupt and the market is consolidating around the the more high quality offerings which is what you would expect as a, a market matures and we're seeing that happen in real time so back in 2020 the majority of e-bikes didn't have ul certified batteries it was a cost-cutting measure they can get away with it back then because it was still such a, a new industry and thus the risk of having a low quality battery that had the potential to short circuit or have some kind of you know issue with it was more elevated i would also note here that the diy space back then was a lot more it was larger than it is today for instance my very first bike was in 2021 and i built a, a diy bike that was kind of sketchy with a non-ul certified battery and i would never do that today i did it back then because the kind of bike i wanted just didn't exist there was very few options in the market that were what I was looking for. So I built my own bike and it was good for the time. But today there's just so many great options to choose from that I would never build that bike again. For instance, the bike I'm on right now is better in almost every single way. And the battery is UL certified. So overall, batteries are very safe and they've been safe for a long time as long as they come from a reputable supplier and they have the, the proper uh, safety certifications. Another safety thing you can look for that's indirectly uh, a safety feature is an IP water and dust rating for the battery. This is another one of those things that I don't ever remember seeing back in the early days. But today, a lot of bikes have some kind of water and dust resistance because along with uh, short circuiting from just poorly constructed batteries leading to potential issues, uh, corrosion and water getting to the battery could also uh, kickstart degradation and issues. And by having the battery just better sealed with an IP rating, that can also prevent this damage from happening. So if I had to sum up the whole risk of e-bike battery fires uh, today going into 2025, I would say it's really not as big of a concern as it was uh, even as little as two years ago. The market overall is just maturing, leaving us with uh, higher quality bikes to choose from. Customers know to look for safety certifications. To be competitive now, companies need to offer this. There's also less of a need today to make DIY custom bikes unless you really know what you're doing and you want to pursue that path. And again, janky kind of custom built bikes were one of the major groups that had these issues. And for extra safety, having a sealed battery with that IP rating is another nice little insurance policy to have. It keeps water out and reduces the, the odds of you know damaging the battery that way. I also found out that uh, when it comes to electric cars, 
which already use high quality batteries. They're from more established companies like Ford, Tesla, right? They've never used cheap batteries to begin with. Uh, the, the rate of battery fires for EVs, it's actually less than with gas cars. So EVs are already safer on this aspect than gas cars. And I fully expect the same thing to be true for electric bikes versus gas bikes. But if you're still concerned, the final piece of little advice I can give you is around charging. Because statistically, if a battery is going to catch fire, it's not going to be when it's just off sitting in your garage. It's going to be right after it receives damage, like a, a puncture, right? If you crash, that's when it's the most likely to potentially catch fire. And the other most likely time is when the battery is charging or discharging. So if you're concerned about that, only do that activity in a safe location. And while you're around, I wouldn't charge an e-bike in your house unsupervised or overnight or anything like that if you're concerned about this but please leave a comment below let us know your thoughts on this whole topic if you guys enjoyed and you want more people to see this video leave it a like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one peace